Rahman Rahim Assalamu Alaikum in this video lecture we'll talk about the consolidation test so these are the contents and in the introduction part we'll talk about the definition of consolidation consolidation is basically the process uh, of dissipation of excess pore water pressure when the load is applied on saturated clay soil excess pore water pressure is generated with the passage of time this excess pore water pressure start dissipating due to the dissipation of excess pore water pressure there is some settlement in the clay soil this process is called consolidation so it's of three types immediate consolidation this refers to the coarse material when the load is applied on the uh, granular material it immediately settles this is called immediate consolidation and the next one is primary consolidation which is related to the removal of excess pore water pressure upon the loading so uh, it means primary consolidation is the function of pore pressure. So the third one is the secondary consolidation which is related to the readjustment of soil particles. When all the uh, excess pore water pressure is removed, then soil, uh, load is carried by the soil particles itself. Then they try to readjust and the settlement uh, occurs. This is called secondary consolidation. So here is the a difference between the compaction and consolidation. Uh, compaction is basically a three-phase process. Uh, it comprises of air, water and soil solids while consolidation is comprised of only two uh, phases. This is, uh, these are water whites and soil solids. So compaction you know is uh, instantaneous process and the consolidation is time dependent process. Uh, compaction is related to or applicable to all soils while consolidation is applicable to only clay soils. So in compaction dry density increases while moisture content does not change because it's an instantaneous process. So dry density increases in consolidation with the change in moisture content as moisture content decreases. This is applicable to unsaturated soils because it includes removal of air whites while uh, consolidation is applicable to saturated clay soils and water whites are decreased. So here is the introduction of the test uh, that is used to determine the consolidation. So it is one dimension consolidation because uh, in this test we only allow the soil to settle in one direction only one direction that is vertical direction so that is why it is also called one dimension consolidation test it is also known as odometer test so we'll follow astm d2435 what is the significance as a change in volume which is basically the consolidation uh, is one of the governing design criteria if the settlement is not kept to the tolerate limit the design life of the structure will be reduced so uh, for example for uh, design of isolated footings so a liable settlement let's say is 25 millimeter if uh, the uh, the settlement value exceeds this tolerable value then the design life of the structure will definitely reduce so that is why it is very significant to determine the settlement of the soil so where is the scope of the test? Uh, in this test, through this test, uh, we basically determine initial wide ratio, compression index, recompression index, compressibility index, coefficient of volume compressibility, swelling index, peak consolidation pressure, coefficient of consolidation, and hydraulic conductivity. Uh, we'll uh, talk about the uh, basic concept of all these parameters in the next slides. So next one is the apparatus. Uh, this is the apparatus we'll use uh, to perform consolidation tests. So first one is consolidation cell. So dial gauge or LVDT, linear vertical displacement transducer. Porous stones, filter paper. Filter paper uh, is used because it allows water to uh, migrate, but it does not allow soil particles to migrate so that is the purpose of filter paper so we need balance to measure stopwatch to record the time oven for oven drying the sample and the moisture cans 
So here you can see the uh, assembly. This is the soil sample. Here are the sandstones and in between the sample, uh, soil sample and sandstone will place uh, filter paper. Here is the uh, water bath to keep the soil saturated. And this one is linear uh, vertical displacement transducers. So uh, it is used to determine the displacement caused by the loading applied on the soil. So these are the apparatus details. Now we'll move towards the procedure. What is the procedure to uh, perform this test? So in the first step, we'll determine the ring diameter and the ring mass. Then we'll determine the ring height. In the lab, uh, we have the uh, rings that are having diameter equal to six centimeter and height two centimeter. In the next step, uh, we need to prepare the soil sample. So soil sample can be prepared. Uh, our sampling can be done in two ways. First one is if we don't have the uh, undisturbed sample, then we need to uh, prepare the remodeled soil sample. So how we prepare the remodeled sample? Let's take a simple example. Let's say uh, we aren't given the uh, undisturbed sample. So for remodeled sample, we need two things. We need to determine the amount of soil that is to be placed in the ring. And the second one is we need to uh, know the moisture content because the moisture content will have to be added in the dry soil to mix it thoroughly. So for example, then we must know the MDD of the soil, maximum dry density that is obtained from the Proctor test. Let's say it is 1.96 gram per centimeter cube. So if we have this value, we'll use the 95% of MDD that is 1.86. Then if we have OMC, optimum moisture content, let's say it is 13%, then we'll use 95% of OMC. That is 12.35%. Why we take 95%? Because 100% compaction is not achievable in the field. So that is why there is some relaxation. Uh, we usually uh, have 5% relaxation, 8% relaxation. So here we can use 5% relaxation. So now, as we know, density is equals to mass per unit volume. We need mass of soil. So we have density and volume. Volume, how we uh, find out the volume? Volume of the ring is equals to pi by four d square into h d is the dia that is six centimeter and h is the two centimeter so we'll obtain the uh, volume 56.5 centimeter cube so now by this formula we'll determine the mass of soil that will be equal to 105 gram then uh, as we know we have a 12.35 percent of omc then 12.35 percent of one 0 0.5 gram by weight of water is equals to 12.98 gram. Uh, it is basically 12.35 percent of 105 gram of soil. We need to determine the weight uh, of water that comes out to be 12.98 gram. Now we'll put this water into the 105 gram of soil and we'll mix it thoroughly. Then we'll prepare the soil sample like this. So we'll put the soil. Uh, and uh, moisture content mixed in this ring and the final shape will look like this okay the next thing is if we have the undisturbed sample then simply we'll have to trim the soil to fit and completely fill that in like this okay so next step step number three is measure the mass of wet soil plus ring and in the next step Assemble the apparatus like this. We have uh, clay soil here and two sandstones, one at the uh, top and the uh, second one is at the bottom. Uh, we'll have to place the filter paper in between soil sample and the sandstone. Uh, we'll then place LVDT and uh, to record the displacement. And this is the water bath to keep it saturated. So that is how we'll assemble the apparatus. In this step five, I will add the distilled water to keep it saturated. Now, in the step six, what is the step six is basically we'll apply the loading. So let's say, for example, if we have five Newton load, then we'll apply this load and we'll record the reading. Re reading means uh, the 
the displacement will be uh, passed by this 5 newton law so we'll measure the dial gauge reading dial gauge reading of displacement for 24 hours after 1 minute 2 minute 4 minute 8 minute 15 minutes and up to 24 hours similarly in the next day we'll apply 10 newton then for the next day we'll apply 20 newton and so on and we'll record the uh, displacement dial gauge readings so uh, here uh, you can see this is the hanger this is the apparatus this is the uh, uh, LVDT will apply the load over here and will record the reading for 24 hours like after 1 minute 2 minute 4 minute 8 minute 15 30 60 120 and 14 40 minutes okay so in the next step uh, following the load and unload sequence allow the specimen to swell for 24 hours so what is the load and unload sequence firstly we load the sample like we apply uh, 25 kpa load 50 kpa load 100 kpa load 200 and up to 400 kpa load then we unload the sample to check the swelling potential of the soil we'll uh, briefly talk about this loading and unloading in the next few slide so in the step 8 uh, remove the ring from cell remove the surplus water and determine the mass of ring plus specimen what does it mean after the completion of test remove the soil specimen ring and then weight it again so actually step 8 and 9 are uh, same so here comes the observations and calculation the most important part of this test at the beginning of test what we need to do is to record the diameter of specimen i told you earlier that diameter is six centimeter it can vary uh, we have circular ring so that is six centimeter initial height of the specimen is two centimeter mass of specimen ring plus specimen that comes out to be 157.76 gram so these readings are the example uh, is the example and the readings are taken from the experiment that we performed last year so just to make you understand that how we uh, perform the experiment and how we make the calculations so these are the actual readings basically taken from a performed experiment so next mass of the specimen ring is 42.25 gram now we need to determine the initial moisture content Initial moisture content, we have determined the weight of wet soil plus can uh, before the test that is 157.76. So as you know that for uh, determination of moisture content, we need to know the uh, dry soil mass. So we cannot obtain the dry soil mass before the test. So it will be obtained after the completion of the test. So after the completion of test, uh, we put the uh, wet soil sample plus can into the oven and then we obtain the open dry sample after 24 hours then the dry soil mass comes out to be 138.9 so by uh, the formula we can determine the initial moisture content that comes out to be 19.51 percent in the next step at the end of the test we need to determine the final moisture content we have mass of entire wet specimen plus can after the completion of test this wet specimen plus can weight is after the completion of test that is 157.2 gram and the mass of entire dry specimen plus can is same as we can uh, we can determine it only after the completion of test that is 138.9 so final moisture content comes out to be 18.8 percent a very less change so these are the readings as I earlier told you that these are the actual readings of a practical that we performed last year. So let's say uh, this is the time and this is the first loading 25 kPa. DR stands for die reading. We'll uh, note the die reading after 1, 2, 4 and these are the die readings only. To, uh, to convert these values into the centimeter or millimeter the least count of our experiment our, uh, our apparatus is 0 0.001 centimeter what does it mean if we multiply dial reading with 0 0.001 
then the value will be equal uh, then value will be in centimeters so we will apply 25 kpa load for 24 hours and will determine the uh, displacement dial readings then we'll apply 50 kpa load and same procedure 100 200 400 then we'll come to the unloading because we need to determine the swelling uh, potential of the soil so we'll unload and we'll have 200 kpa then 100 kpa 50 kpa same procedure to record the reading then reading will be reversed as swelling uh, now we again reload it 200 kpa 400 kpa 800 kpa and up to 1600 kpa so these are the readings now what we do uh, in the calculation part this is the most important uh, phase of this test because it involves lots of uh, technicalities so firstly we need to determine the initial wide ratio initial wide ratio is basically the ratio of volume of whites to the volume of solids so volume of solids is basically mass of soil to the uh, mass of soil solids to the density of soil solids so uh, mass of soil solids M, uh, is ms and uh, density of soil solids is equals to uh, specific gravity into rho of water so we'll put the values uh, ms we have uh, 138.9 uh, is the mass of uh, soil, dry soil plus can will minus the weight of can that is 42.25 to get the mass of soil solid then uh, specific gravity is 2.65 if we are not given the value of specific gravity we will put the 2.65 and 1 is the uh, density of water 1 gram per centimeter cube so uh, that is how we obtain the Vs that comes out to be 36.4 centimeter cube now we need to determine the volume of whites as we know total volume uh, in case of saturated clay soil there are no air whites no volume of air whites so there will be only volume of water whites and volume of solids so uh, we have volume of whites is equal to total volume minus volume of solids so we'll determine the total volume that is pi d square by 4 into h and that comes out to be 56.54 centimeter cube uh, will minus the it will subtract the volume of solid that is 36.4 and will obtain e naught that is equals to 0.55 what does it mean this is the initial wide ratio at the start of the test because in consolidation wide ratio decreases as settlement is happening in the soil so decrease in wide ratio means there is settlement in the soil so this is the initial wide ratio and due to the application of load there will be decrease in the uh, wide ratio so uh, let's look at the next slide that how the wide ratio decreases uh, upon the application of the load so this is the pressure in kg per centimeter square 0.25 and is equal to 25 kpa uh, these red uh, numbers are showing column numbers basically so initial deformation die reading at the beginning of the first loading is basically zero and deformation dial reading representing 100% consolidation we need only one reading 100% consolidation means what we'll go back to the slide you can see here for 25 kpa the last reading is 11 what does it mean no the 100% consolidation has been caused by 25 kpa 25 kpa load ne jitna consolidate karna tha 100% wo maximum 11 tak hi displacement ki value gayi hai so that is why we say 25 kpa load has caused 100% uh, uh, consolidation at the value of 11 similarly 50 kpa will pick 30 and then 100 uh, 61 and so on so now these are the deformation die reading representing 100% consolidation in centimeters not in centimeters so this is not in centimeter these are just the dye readings now uh, change in thickness of the specimen delta h in centimeters so 11 minus 0 and will multiply dial reading with the least count least count is 0 0.001 centimeter so value is 0 0.011 now uh, change in thickness of the specimen 
similarly will move downward and will get the values so in the next phase change in the wide ratio is equals to delta h over height of soil solids as height of soil solids will be equal to volume of solids divided by cross sectional area as volume is equals to area into height so from that relation we can obtain hs that comes out to be 1.29 as we have determined vs and cross sectional area already uh, pi d square by force 4 gives the cross sectional area and vs we have already determined so we'll put this value to get the change in wide ratio that after the application of 25 kpa how much wide ratio has been changed as we in, uh, have initial wide ratio before the application of load that is 0.55 and now after the application of 25 kpa there is the change of wide ratio 0.009 so after the application of 25 kpa load uh, what is the remaining wide ratio 0.542 by subtracting this and this okay similarly we'll uh, determine wide ratios after the application of 25 kpa load 50 kpa load 100 kpa load 200 kpa load 400 kpa load and so on so move on towards the next slide that is calculation uh, or determination of cc cs and cr cc is basically the compression index which indicates the compressibility of normally consolidated soils uh, how we obtain this uh, let's see then we'll back uh, come back to this slide so this is the plot of e uh, e versus uh, log of p so along the x-axis there is log of pressure in logarithmic scale and this is wide ratio uh, let's say this is let's say it is uh, 25 kpa load or in kg per centimeter square is it, it is 0.25 so we have determined the uh, wide ratios after the application of every load will obtain this graph so how we obtain the compression index compression index is basically the slope of compression part of the curve so this is the compression part of the curve like this so how we determine the slope basically let's see this is e1 this is e1 that comes out to be 0.5 we can uh, indicate any points so this is e1 corresponding to this we have e1.9 from this to this this is p1.9 approximately 0.9 now e2 is 0.46 you can take any value along this curve this is 0.46 and corresponding to this we have p2 1.9 now what we need to do is we'll put these values e cc is basically slow change in wide ratio divided by uh, change in pressure so e1 minus e2 over log of p2 over p1 so 0.5 minus 0.46 and we obtain cc is equals to 0.12 now it's your assignment to determine cr cs what is cr cr basically the uh, slope of recompression part of the curve recompression part of the curve so this is the recompression part of the curve so similarly you will uh, follow the same steps as i have done uh, for the cc but you will take the point along this part, portion of the curve, recompression so what is cs cs is basically the swelling uh, swelling index and it is basically the slope of the swelling part of the curve. This is the swelling part of the curve. So that is how you determine the swelling index. Now, in the step four, we need to determine the coefficient of compressibility, A sub V. It is a uh, same, uh, we'll determine it uh, with the same procedure as I have done for CC. It is basically uh, obtained from the slope of E versus P, not log of P e versus p graph and by adopting the same procedure as we did for cc will obtain a sub v now coefficient of volume compressibility m sub v it is basically the uh, change uh, volumetric 
strain per unit increase in stress. This is basically volumetric strain per unit increase in stress. So by simplifying the formula, we have A sub V from this uh, formula. A naught we already have determined, we will be able to determine the M sub V. So here comes the uh, pre-consolidation pressure. What is pre-consolidation pressure? So just look at the graph, we'll plot a graph between E wide ratio and log of uh, pressure. Here, uh, in our case, it will be P, uh, it can be stress, anything else. So we'll obtain a curve like this, okay? Now what we need to do is, we'll indicate the point of maximum curvature. Let's say uh, along this curvature, this is the point of maximum curvature. In the next step, will draw a horizontal straight line that is AC. In the next step, we'll uh, draw a tangent at this point of maximum curvature or let's say it is AB. Now in the next step, we'll uh, draw angle by sector of AC and AB. We'll cut, uh, it means the half of these two lines. So this is the half angle AP, AF. So in the next step, we'll extend the linear portion of end of this curve backward where it intersect the angle bisector line corresponding to this is uh, pre-consolidation pressure. So let's uh, do it that how we determine basically uh, pre-consolidation pressure. So let's say, let's say uh, this is the graph of E versus log of P and this is the curve. Let's say this is the curve. No, first step is to indicate the point of maximum curvature. Let's say this is the point of maximum curvature. Next step is draw straight horizontal line. We have drawn it. Now draw a tangent at this point. Let's say this is the tangent of this point. Now draw angle by sector of this line and this line, this line, tangent. Let's say this is the angle by sector line. Now uh, extend the end of linear portion of this curve. Let's say this is, uh, sorry, it's a little bit mistake, we'll erase it. We'll draw it again. Let's say this. So we'll extend the linear portion of end of this curve backward. So where it intersect, where it intersect the angle bisector line corresponding to this uh, x-axis value is pre-consolidation pressure. So this is how we uh, determine the pre-consolidation pressure. Now, so this is the actual graph of a value uh, we have obtained from the practical uh, values. So this is wide ratio and log of pressure. So you can see point of maximum curvature will draw a horizontal line, then draw a tangent at this point like this. Then angle by sector of these two lines will be this. Then extend the linear portion of this curve backward like this where it intersects uh, the angle bisector line corresponding to this we have pre-consolidation pressure so in this case it is 2.2 kg per centimeter square so in this next step a very important step is to determine the coefficient of vertical consolidation so uh, there are various methods to determine this c sub v but we'll use log of time method in the log of time method the formula used to calculate c sub v is p50 multiplied by HDR square over T50. So here capital T50 stands for time factor for 50% consolidation that is obtained from a table. So from the table uh, is uh, this value is 0.197 from this table actually. So here is the degree of consolidation. Here is the time factor. In the formula we have 50% consolidation. The value is 0.197. So from here we obtain this value. SDR is drainage path height. So we'll talk about uh, this in the next, uh, next few slides.
and here comes the most important thing that is time uh, t50 this is basically the time taken by the soil for 50 percent consolidation under the specific load so how we determine these uh, so these are the steps uh, will not uh, read these steps will go to the practical uh, determination uh, through the graph how we basically determine so let's say uh, we'll plot the graph between deformation dial readings deformation dial readings versus time in the log scale so we'll uh, let's say we obtain this graph the first step is to uh, remember this portion initial uh, curvature is immediate consolidation this is primary consolidation portion and this portion is secondary consolidation so we'll extend the uh, linear uh, this primary consolidation uh, primary consolidation part of this curve uh, will extend linearly downward like this then will extend the linear portion of secondary compression like this where it intersects corresponding to this along the y-axis there is the deformation for 100% consolidation d100 means deformation for 100% consolidation why we are determining d100 uh, because we need to find out the t50 how let's see now we need to determine the first change in the curve so let's say this is the first change in the curve so this is the point corresponding to this will determine t1 this is time t1 now indicate the point uh, which is four times of t1 multiply let's say this is one and multiply one by four let's say this is four this is four times of t1 equals to t2 so corresponding to this we'll join this line on the curve so we'll uh, now we'll determine the height of these two lines these two points let's say let's say this is two two value now we'll plot the same height from this point to this point against this point will obtain the d naught this is deformation for zero percent consolidation now we'll uh, obtain the average of d naught plus d hundred divided by two will obtain value that is basically d50 deformation for 50 percent consolidation so let's say this is the deformation for 50 percent consolidation will indicate a point corresponding to this on the curve against this uh will obtain the time for 50 percent consolidation which will be used in the formula of c so we let's see uh, how we do it so let's say let's say we'll plot a graph so let's say this is the graph this is log of time along x axis log of time this is e so what is the most critical point here to determine is it will be uh, the y-axis value will be plotted in the reverse order for example it will be 0 1 2 3 and so on like this it will be plotted in reverse order and x axis values will be plotted uh, on the logarithmic scale so it's a semi log so let's say this is the curve we obtain so what is the first point this is the uh, uh, primary consolidation part this is the immediate consolidation part and it is the secondary consolidation part just extend linearly the primary consolidation part like this then extend the secondary consolidation part like this where it intersect corresponding to this check the value of e this value will be equals to d100 deformation for 100 percent consolidation now in the next step indicate the first change in the curve so let's say where the start of primary consolidation is happening so corresponding to this will indicate a point along x-axis that is basically t1 now multiply t1 with 4 
and indicate a point. Let's say this is 4t1. This is 4t1, 4 into t1, which is equals to t2. We have indicated this point. Now join this point with the curve. Now determine the thickness of these two points between these two points. Let's say this distance is 2. Let's say this distance. Now two uh, same distance will be plotted over here. Like this. Same. Let's say this is 2. So the values will be like this. Sorry. Against this along the y-axis there will be deformation for 0% consolidation. Now we have D0 and D100 will take the average that is D0 plus D100 divided by 2 which is equals to D50. Let's say this value is let's say let's say this value is 2. Let's say so against 2 this is the point of 2 against this we'll join this with the curve and Responding to this, we have T50. This value is T50. That will be used in C sub V. So that is how we determine the T50. So now HDR, height of drainage path is basically H, uh, initial height of the sample that is 2 cm in our case. D50 is deformation for 50% consolidation that we have. Uh, determined already we'll put the values in this formula to get HDR it is divided by 2 because in our case it is doubly drainage there is two-way drainage uh, one sandstone is at the top and second one is at the bottom that is why we'll divide it by 2 we'll take the average distance if it is singly drainage we'll not divide it by 2 so moving towards the next let's uh, let's say now we'll determine C sub V for one case for 25 kPa. Uh, for the other loadings, you will uh, determine uh, the C sub V for 50 kPa, 100 kPa, uh, 200 kPa, and so on. This is your assignment. This is our, your assignment to uh, calculate C sub V for other loadings. I'll uh, make you understand how to calculate the C sub V for one case for 25 kPa for other loadings you will determine it for example these are the actual reading these are the actual readings this is time this is the dial reading in minutes so so let's say let's say this is the graph we obtain later on we'll uh, study how I have plotted this graph in the excel uh, that how to plot the reverse values in the Excel. So let's say this is the graph uh, we obtain between, you can see here 0, 2 in the reverse order. And these are the log values. So first step is to increase the linear portion of primary consolidation like this. And then extend the secondary consolidation part like this. Then indicate the point along the y-axis that is 300. It comes out to be 11 in this case. Now next step is to indicate the point of first change in the curve, uh, the start of primary consolidation basically. So here is the point responding to this will obtain T1 that is 8. Now multiply 8 by 4 that is 8, 32. T2 comes out to be 32. This point corresponding to this. Now we'll determine the difference between these two heights. Uh, this comes out to be 2.8. This distance is 2.8. Now plot 2.8 over here and we'll obtain the D0 that comes out to be 2.2. Now take the average uh, of these two values to get D50 that is 6.6. 6.6 is uh, approximately here like this and we have uh, plotted this value over here. Now corresponding to this will obtain the D50 that comes out to be 70 minutes. So that is how we determine the D50. Let's get back to the Excel and let me make you understand that how we plot the graph. So let's say these are the time and the dial readings. Now, what I will do, select these values and go to the insert 
xy plot okay this is the graph now what i told you that uh, along the x axis the values are in logarithmic scale so the here this is option okay format axis so firstly uh, we'll change the y axis value in the reverse order by values in the reverse order so these are the values in the reverse order now click over the x axis and uh, check the uh, axis options so in the logarithmic scale click ok and this is how you obtain the graph uh, in the excel so let's get back to our lecture so as we have already discussed about this so here is the 56.6 .6, multiply it with, with the least one 0 0.001 will obtain the value in centimeters minutes and then seconds so in the next part we'll determine the hdr that is h naught minus d50 we have d50 we'll put these values in this formula to get the height of drainage path that comes out to 0 0.9965 centimeter put all these values in the c sub v formula here you can see we find out 0 0.00192 centimeter scale per second so that is uh, what i have calculated c sub v for 25 kba now this is your assignment you will have to submit it uh, for other loading 50 kp 100 200 and so on so there is another question as well for the next loading 50 100 200 and so on that h naught will be same or not it's understood that uh, h naught will not be same after every uh, increment of the loading for example at the start of the test no loading has been applied and the wide ratio uh, then uh, we have h naught 2 centimeter after application of 25 kpa there is a decrease in wide ratio so it means now the initial height of soil sample for the next loading will be the height that has been remained after the application of 25 kpa so uh, that is what you have to answer as well now in the last step we'll need to determine the coefficient of permeability that is c sub v into a sub v into unit weight of water divided by one plus e naught we have e naught we have determined c sub v a sub v as well so k will be determined for 25 kpa 50 kpa and so on that is your assignment you will have to submit as well so uh, in the last uh, here are the limitations so it only considers the vertical uh, settlement in one direction so very small scale testing to simulate the field conditions so there are other limitations as well so uh, during the online session we'll discuss we'll ask uh, these limitations from your side then we'll include the further limitations as well so i hope uh, this video lecture make you understand uh, how we perform the consolidation test so thank you allah hafiz